David Goggins proliferates the message of discipline, hard work, and training, even when you don't feel like it. But as I discovered, this message is not always a beneficial one, and it can lead to a host of problems in your fitness journey, especially with overtraining. Now off the bat, I wanna say that overtraining is not going to be a problem for 99% of people, simply because most people don't actually train hard enough to the point where accumulated fatigue is actually going to be a problem. But if you're truly gritting your teeth through every workout you do, then I think this concept will be relevant to you. So let me give a bit of background as to what I'm talking about here. Every time you wanna train, there's this internal monologue within you and you have to make the decision of whether you want to train or don't want to train and you base that off how you feel. And a lot of the time in the lead up to going to the gym or doing a workout, you feel tired, you feel fatigued, you feel like you don't wanna go and hit the workout because it's gonna be hard. And when you're someone that's consistently hitting workout after workout, day in, day out, over months and months of time, it can be difficult to recognize whether you're actually systemically fatigued, overtrained and stressed, or whether on that particular day, because you don't wanna train, you're simply just being a wuss. And this decision is so hard to make because it's so difficult to tell whether you're actually systemically fatigued or whether you just feel tired and are being a bit of a wuss on that specific day. I think that the difficulty of making this decision is augmented by online personalities like David Goggins, Tate, Jocko Willink, people like this that encourage guys to work out and train even when they don't feel like it in this message of building discipline. And I think ultimately the message that they spread is beneficial to the overwhelming majority of guys. And that's because the overwhelming majority of guys either don't train at all or aren't training hard enough. But where I think this message becomes a bit less applicable is when perhaps guys like yourself that are training day in, day out, extremely hard for months on end, adopt that belief and think that if you ever skip a workout, ever take a rest day, or ever ease off from your training whatsoever, that means that you're allowing your feelings to dictate whether you train or not, which directly contradicts the message that David Goggins tries to spread. And I was definitely someone that succumbed to this. I felt sick. I was extremely tired. My sleep was messed up. I wasn't making any progress in the gym. I didn't get any pump when I went to the gym. But nevertheless, I still just trained every day for the sake of adhering to this message that you should be disciplined and not rely on what you're feeling in order to make a decision on whether you should train. But if you are in the 1%, that truly bust themselves in the gym or whatever training that you do, then the message that David Goggins spreads clearly doesn't really apply to you because you're obviously someone that doesn't rely on sporadic stints of motivation to actually train as backed up by all the previous months of workouts that you've hit so consistently. So let me tell you a story about how this happened in my own life. So last year, throughout the first half of 2023, I would go to the gym six or seven days every week. And sometimes I would go for periods of three weeks straight without ever having a rest day. And I would kind of justify doing that to myself because I would say that I'd go to the gym and only do cardio and abs, and that could count as my rest day. So I did that for like six months and I felt crap and I didn't see any progress really throughout that six month training period. I'd also injured my left shoulder, which prohibited me from training chest and shoulders, as well as some other exercises. And I felt like my physique was regressing and I was just going backwards in terms of the weight and reps that I was doing on all the exercises in my workouts. And then in July, I went overseas for about a month. And over the course of that month, I completely stopped training. And this period was 
definitely suboptimal for a period of recovery, if you wanted to call it that. My sleep and nutrition were definitely not dialed in. And when I came back home and started training again, although I started off weaker than I was when I'd left, after a while, after getting back into the swing of things, I was breaking the plateaus that I'd previously experienced, lifting more weight than I ever had, and doing more reps than I ever had. And I think most importantly, I was enjoying training again, and I felt good being in the gym and training really hard. And so I think after that happened, it was kind of like this epiphany that I had, where I realized that this message that spread by people like David Goggins about this disciplined mindset maybe isn't applicable 100% of the time, although I still definitely do agree with it. So I think it just goes to show how beneficial taking a break from the gym or whatever training you do and just easing your foot off the gas a little bit can do for your training in the long run. And I also want to emphasize just how suboptimal my four-week break was. So imagine what you could do with a really dialed in one to two weeks of recovery where you focus on your sleep, nutrition, not drinking alcohol, getting sunlight, all these things that boost your recovery. So the number one step here is to actually realize when you're overtrained. So how can you recognize that you are overtrained? If you've watched this far, then you're probably someone that overtraining and systemic fatigue might be applicable to. So I'll list some common symptoms of overtraining. The most important one I think is seeing no gains in the gym or any progress whatsoever in your training. No pumps, horrible workouts, and just feeling absolutely dead throughout and after your workout sessions. Even you might be getting weaker, you can't lift as much weight or do as many reps as you previously could. There are also some health indicators that are a bit more nerdy that can allow you to gain insight as to whether you might be overtrained. So these are things like tracking your heart rate variability and your heart rate. And if you see your heart rate variability decreasing over time and your resting heart rate increasing over time, these can be signs that you're overtrained and fatigued. Another sign is poor sleep quality, and you might be waking up throughout the night. You might be waking up feeling not rested at all. You might have difficulties falling asleep. And if you're someone that tracks their sleep, you might be having less sleep in the deep sleep stage. But because all of these symptoms of overtraining can also occur when you're just feeling like a wuss and you feel tired just on one particular day, the real problem lies in recognizing whether you're systemically fatigued or on that given day, you just had no motivation to train. So I've come up with two solutions that you can implement in making this decision. The first solution is to outsource this decision to a wearable, like an Apple Watch, a Whoop, or an Aura Ring. Devices that can track your health metrics like HRV, resting heart rate, and other data that can then give you an indication of how fatigued you are and your readiness to train. It takes out that human internal decision-making process that has to take place. If the wearable says that you're all good to train, then you train. If it tells you that you should perhaps ease off from your training and maybe even take a rest day, then that's what you do. I've found that the majority of the time, it's gonna tell you that you're fine to train. But if it does tell you that at a specific point in time, you are more fatigued, then you can adjust your training accordingly. Now, something that always happened to me was that I would get up, feel extremely tired, fatigued, didn't wanna train. And so when I was leaning towards making that decision of not going to the gym that day, there was just David Goggins at the back of my mind telling me that if I skip today's workout, then I'm a wuss. And so when you have a wearable that tracks your health metrics, you don't have to make that decision of deciding for yourself whether you're going to train or not. 
and that's extremely beneficial. The second solution is to schedule rest days and deload weeks ahead of time so that ultimately when the time to take a rest day or a deload week comes about, you don't have to make that decision to do it because you've already scheduled it in. So when you've already got rest days and deload weeks scheduled in ahead of time, you don't have to think about the decision to train or not train. And that way you're allowing all this fatigue that's accumulated over time to be reduced. This has been a topic that's been on my mind for so long and it's been something that I've struggled with as well. In making this video, I wanted to see whether anyone has had any similar experiences. And if you have, I'd be extremely keen to hear your thoughts on this situation. And you can leave a comment below if you want. Thank you and I'll see you next time.